Hey, good morning. Welcome. Thanks for coming out here to Urcon. As Joe said, my name is G Mark. I'm here to talk to you about honing time. It's kind of an interesting kind of talk because, you know, Tourcon 12 was the theme was time. And he said, all right, well, what am I going to come up with? Because they had a chance. I've been doing a lot of talks for a while. And probably one of the more interesting ones that I did was a couple years back when I did one, something called A Hacker Looks at 50. And I go, on 50? That's like hexadecimal looks a whole lot better, doesn't it? I'm only 32. But I tried for a transformational talk. And anybody, anybody heard that talk? Yeah. All right. So I got some fans out here. That's pretty cool because I looked at all the old experiences I had doing hacking in the early days and tried to tie those into some sort of life lessons. And it literally changed lives. I had people come up to me and said, man, I'm doing what I wanted to do. I started my company. I had one guy at a business conference came up and says, you cost me my two best employees. You know, I'm getting ready for this guy to take a swing at me. He says, they went out, they started their own business. We hired him back as subcontractors. They're loving it. They're doing 10 times better than they ever were. Thank you so very, very much. So it's like, wow, that was cool. You tried to do something transformational and it works. So what I did is I tried to come up with Life wisdom in 80 columns or less. And for those of you who remember the old 80 column punch cards, and it's pretty bad when you give them to somebody, they say, my grandmother told me about these things. Um, I had a deck that's up in mom's attic. And so I printed a few more of these. If anybody would like one as a reminder or a souvenir or something like that, I'll be happy to give them to you at the end of the talk. But you've got to promise me that you'll watch the video if you haven't. It's up on YouTube. OK, so they're here. So that'll work. Now what? When I'm trying to figure out, okay, what do we want to be when we grow up? Anybody know exactly what you want to be? You got your whole life planned out again, everything's perfect? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Okay, great. So we need some sense of direction. So what's out there? There's tons of books, there's tons of courses, there's tons of programs and things like that. And you can go broke buying books that'll make you rich. But the problem is that I have observed and going through and looking at a lot of this literature is those are ingredients for success. Oh, you need that, but then you need a little bit of that. Oh, you got to incorporate that. But nobody out there is giving you the recipe for success, how to put all that stuff together. So what I wanted to do in 50 minutes or less is to try to kind of give you a thought of what to do with time and how to make it work for you. So I'm going to talk about time and life and money because our community's got a wide divergence. As you know, we've all got friends who are scary, scary smart who live in somebody else's basement and eat the trash out of the McDonald's, right? Wait, what's, what's the deal here, guys? You should be running the world. In fact, we dive right into the internet and we dive into the system and we own it, but we don't own our lives. So it's not about religion. I'm not selling you anything. You don't have to even agree with the stuff I'm saying, but my goal here is to create in you a desire to lead a more successful life. Anybody want a more successful life? Yeah, it's going to work. So let's talk about time. What is time? As we all know, Einstein discovered that time is actually money, and for that he earned the Nobel Prize. <laughs> okay, good, you're awake. Of course, you realize that he did not do that discovery. It is, in fact, Benjamin Franklin who was quoted as time is money. You need proof? Go ahead and check your pocket. <laughs> That's why we put him on a $100 bill. Yo, nice to see you. <laughs> so, time is money. We've got to treat him the same. Because your money or your life, guess what? Making money is our life for a lot of us. And I got on that rat trap where I was working 10 you know, times harder than I ever thought I would be doing 70, 80, 90, 100 hour work weeks. And you wonder, like, what are you doing? We're exchanging our time for money. And if you pay careful attention to how do you spend your money, but are we paying as much attention as to how we spend our time? Because you want to go to that end of the world trip for 6,000 bucks or 10,000 bucks, sure, you could be saving it. But what are you doing with your life? Because time is something special. Yeah, it sort of keeps everything from happening all at once, right? But you can't stop it. Not unless you can go and travel at relativistic speeds, and I don't think anybody's solved that problem yet in this room. We can't control it. We can't get more of it. So why don't we cherish it? And it's because I think we all have learned to believe the biggest lie of all. And that lie is that you got all the time in the world. Oh, yeah, we can get to it. We can figure that out. We'll make this happen some other time. Yeah, I'm going to screw around today. I'll get it later. And because of this, we keep pushing off to the future those things that would make a profound difference in our lives if we did them today. Because we think time is sort of an infinite resource. Hey, when you're young, you're a kid, you got plenty of time. You know, Pink Floyd song, and then one day you find 10 years have got behind you. 
And so don't let that happen to you because all of a sudden you wake up and you look in the mirror and you're starting to see gray hairs and you go, wait, where'd the time go? So when we spend our time, we want to do a couple things. We want to pay attention. Do we want to be efficient or do we want to be effective? Okay, time for audience participation. What is efficiency? Somebody. Highest return on investment. Yeah. Highest return on investment. Optimizing your resources. Minimizing your waste, okay? How about effectiveness? If someone asks you to say, define effectiveness. What's effectiveness? Greatest impact. Greatest impact. Getting the job done. Accomplishing the mission. Okay, so we know there's a difference there. Sometimes we talk about them together. But which is easier for you to do? And you find out it's personal driven. Who here thinks that efficiency is more important? It's okay, you can raise your hand. Who here thinks effectiveness is more important? Who here never raises your hand when you're asked to raise your hand? <laughs> All right, that's the majority of you. Well, it turns out that if you look at these two things, they're both very, very important, but I'm gonna suggest that effectiveness is more important because effectiveness lies in accomplishing your mission, whether it's for your company, whether it's for a project, whether it's for your family or your life. There's a lot of efficient people out there. Some of the most efficient people economically are the folks who go through the trash can at night, the homeless people taking out those five cent deposit bottles. But how effective is their life? So efficiency in the absence of effectiveness is worthless. No matter how good you are at getting to the last little bit of detail, if that detail is unimportant, you shouldn't be doing it. You should be focusing on going ahead and moving to the next level. And so what we find then in life is that it's real easy to find a comfort zone and we settle down into it and we just play and we play and we play and we play instead of moving ourselves out because the only opportunity you have for learning or for growth is outside your comfort zone because you're assimilating something new. And that's tough to do sometimes because it requires a discipline to make stuff happen. So we want to be effective. And so what are the highly effective people do. <laughs> want to make money and some more money and lots of money, right? And repeat step one for seven. Oh, that really what uh, Stephen Covey writes about. Anybody ever read Seven Habits, Highly Effective People? Okay, so that's like 15%. So not a lot of market penetration here in this, in this group, which is why I want to share this stuff with you. He says, be proactive. Take the initiative. Make stuff happen. Because just sitting back waiting is not going to be a formula for success. And if you begin with the end in mind, it means you know what your goal is. If you just start wandering around, if you say, oh, you just come along with something that happens, you're not going to get to where you want to go. You'll end up somewhere. But it's not where you thought it was going to be, and it may not have even thought about where you're going to be. But time will pull you along, whether you run along with it or you go kicking and screaming. You don't have a choice in that matter. So put your first things first. Do the most difficult. Do the things that are most valuable. You got a list of 20 things to do, so what do you want to do? Let's do the 12 or 13 easy ones, right? And then like the big honking, ugly product, now we'll come back to that tomorrow. And the next day, well, there's new little stuff, we do that, and the big stuff never gets done. So you got to chop that up into pieces and go for it. And if you do those first three steps, you do what Covey says, you've achieved independence. You're no longer dependent upon other people's for your life, but you can go ahead and make decisions, you can act on your own. But that isn't enough in a society, that isn't enough in a business, that isn't enough in a community. You need to think win-win. You need to go look for operations, for arrangements, for deals, for opportunities where both parties benefit. None of this win-lose stuff, I win, you lose, or else the other way around. And so you look for opportunities where both people can get something that they're looking for. And this is something that a lot of us are really bad at, at least I am. Listen first. Seek first to understand what's the other person talking about? What do they care about? If you take just the first minute to let the other person, what's on your mind? What are you thinking about? What's worrying you? How do you feel? You'll be able to so much better engage in that conversation with somebody. Because otherwise, what do we want to do? Hey, here's what I want. Here's what I'm doing. And here's all the great stuff. And we forget all about the fact that there's somebody else who's got to listen to all that. Have you ever heard the best conversationist you ever met at a con or a party or whatever? Who are they? They're not necessarily people that talk to you the most. They're the people who listen to all your dumb stories and laugh at them. And your good friends are the ones that listen to the same stories over and over again and will still laugh at them. As you get older and older, that's more important. 
And you want to synergize. You want to find ways where one plus one is three. How do we go ahead and we make life a little bit bigger and better than it was otherwise? And so, yeah, you can have, I can have milk, eggs, and flour, but independently, eh, not doing a whole lot. You mix them together, it's a whole lot better. You get something of value. And then lastly, buy more success books, right? <laughs> Sharpen the saw. Keep improving your skill set. Go back and repeat this process over and over again. Because this is not like building a model where you put it together, you get all the little pieces in place, you put it up on the shelf, and you're done. And 10 years later, it's still done. You're a work in progress. And if you don't recognize that, you're going to miss out on the opportunity to grow and to grow and develop and become more than what you are right now. Another thing that Covey had, I think is really wonderful, and I used to do this in a lot of leadership training, is helping people understand the difference between urgent and important. Think about it. Do we confuse the two? When your phone rings, what do you do? You answer it. That's urgent. But what if it's from somebody you don't know or if it's a uh, salesman or somebody you don't want to hear from? It's not important. What if you got a project you absolutely positively got to get out the door by 5 o'clock? So what do you do? You got your email. Ding, 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 ding. Turn it off because it's not urgent. Or it's not important. It's urgent. You want to go see what it is. So we confuse these things. We find out what type of tasks are out there. And if we look at our lives, we'll find out that in the urgent world, you got crises, right? We're really good at that. Particularly some folks saying, hey, have you got your slides ready for your presentation? <laughs> your man is going, uh, uh, uh. Deadline-driven activities. Stuff that you got to get out the door today. Ideally, if you've done some planning, you might have gotten it worked on two weeks ago and it could have already been done. It's not a crisis yet. It's not urgent, but it's still important. You're doing prevention. You're doing things that are going to go ahead and protect you for the future. And you're building up your relationships. I just say interruptions, correspondence, some meetings. Yeah, they're urgent, but they're not important. And then finally, what do we do? We just screw around. Play games, first per person shooter, junk mail, whatever. But the question in life, is what's the most important thing? And it's up there, quadrant two. Really effective people spend a lot of their time there. They start working on things in advance. They make their plans. They say, hey, I'm going to do this 2012 trip, so I'm going to start with a plan to go ahead and save the money, or I'm going to make more money so I can save for it. They don't wait till the week before the deadline and go, now what am I going to do? Because now you're in quadrant one. Yeah, you're going to have quadrant one in your life. But spend your time on two. and Get out of three and get out of four. I don't turn a television on. I haven't turned on a TV on in months. My wife thinks I'm crazy. It's like, I do all these. I'd rather live my life than watch somebody else who's built entertainment to try to entertain me. Because I've got more to do than I can get around to it. But, you know, people just in there uh, watching TV for hours and hours a day. You can't get that time back. So where are you? Do your own little assessment and figure out, am I squandering my time? Am I spending my time below the line? Where it doesn't make any difference. Or am I booing it above the line where it is good for your future? There's a lot of different resources that are out there. If I'm running a business, if I'm trying to run a con, what am I looking for? I'm looking for stuff like people, right? People are a resource. A lot of helpers and volunteers out here. Thank you very much. You make things happen. There's money that's needed to make stuff happen, right? Time, we've talked about time. Materials, it's all the equipment you see around here. It's sort of like along the line, I'll say there's a fifth one, and it's technology. Because you can't say, well, I need a um, you know, 400 megawatt plasma rifle. You know, it's just not there yet. So you can get material, but you can't get the technology. But when it comes along, you're, you're set. And so what we find for all these different resources, they're interchangeable. You can take one, you can swap it for another. You want a job? How much you want? There you go. I'm swapping money for your time. You need a, you need a new computer, you go out and you buy the thing, you take that money. That you swap your time for, you go buy something that you want. You need more people, hire more people. You want technology, go invent it.